Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, this is Srikant and uh, uh, Sudhap here. So we are going to talk about design thinking over here. So um, basically, uh, what happens is generally, uh, so far, the focus has been uh, in the agile communities to focus on uh, uh, to, I mean, to make sure that we work in a collaborative way and uh, work in an efficient way. But uh, these days, uh, I mean, the focus has been changing is it to more about uh, whether we are doing the right thing or not. Because uh, irrespective of how, how however efficient you do things, uh, if it is garbage in, then it will be garbage out. Only thing is that you will be uh, creating the garbage more efficiently. So in this context, uh, in, in identifying what is the right thing to do, uh, uh, people have been coming out with the different approaches and like, for example, Lean Startup and uh, uh, Design Thinking. So uh, in this session, we are going to talk about what this design thinking is all about. Uh, generally, the, the design in the design thinking, the focus ha uh, in the different talks, design thinking talks, uh, the focus has been on the design thinking itself, but we will try to map it to uh, software world as well uh, and see like how this, that can be applied. Fine. So, so that will be the focus. So uh, with that, uh, I think the question uh, I'm going to ask uh, to Sudhap is, uh, let's see, and clear. So with that, I'm going to ask uh, Sudhap a question. Uh, so uh, we, as, as far as design is concerned, we, we generally think about it as a aesthetics uh, and uh, all about uh, related to uh, doing the nice things and things like that. So uh, we, we, get the, we get the thinking of a designer in that context. Uh, but I mean, are we talking about the same thing or is, is this something a little different? So are, are, we, are we saying that the design thinking is all about aesthetics and things, uh, but, uh, or is it, is, is it all also about uh, something else? So okay. that is a question. Okay, so good question. So, uh, so let me start by, uh, by taking an example. Uh, the example I'll use here is that, uh, Say we have an opportunity, a problem with leading to an opportunity. The opportunity is that uh, uh, there are working professionals uh, who uh, are living outside home, working in a, in a different city, not really in, in, in their home, and don't have uh, you know, access to uh, good, uh, nutritious uh, you know, uh, lunch and dinner options. So, so there's an opportunity. And... Uh, and we, we want to solve this problem. Now, one way of uh, dealing with this is that uh, we, um, uh, we uh, directly jump to the solutions. Uh, when I mean directly jumping to the solutions, for example, maybe you know, we are assuming that uh, the people out there uh, looking for these dinner and lunch options uh, maybe uh, we'll, uh, we'll use an app. So we go and hire uh, good designers. Uh, the designers will, uh, will create an app, uh, a very good looking, aesthetically pleasing app. Uh, we will design it, we will develop it, we will test it, and then we'll finally launch the app. The assumption here, of course, is that this is what the users want but there is a very, very good chance that it kind of fails. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there a, a, a different way of doing things? Maybe there is another way of doing things. And this way is that um, instead of directly jumping into solutions, instead of thinking that, yes, the end users actually need an app and we should go and create this app, the first thing we will do is empathy. We will go, we will speak to potential users. Uh, we will try to understand their needs. 
we will try to understand their feelings and then only after going through this exercise we will uh, kind of um, you know define what really is the problem you are going to solve even at, at this point we are not talking about solutions we are still talking about the needs of the people and based on that defining what really is the problem you want to solve and then only after we have done this the next step will be um uh, brainstorming you know thinking uh, out of the box um, uh, thinking um, um, thinking wide thinking of what are the different various options by which we can actually uh, satisfy the need of the end users mm -hmm. and only after doing that only after analyzing and uh, you know uh, different options um, we will kind of then think of what really is the solution which will help us solve uh, which will help us solve the need of the of the of the users so this second approach is something uh, you know this is what uh, design thinking is all about so uh, when you say that i mean this i understand the design thinking what you just mentioned uh, but does it i mean wh what is the usp of design thinking because i understand that there are different approaches uh, like lean startup as well so what is so specific about design thinking uh, as we are talking okay so uh, so when we talk about design thinking uh, we are um, um, uh, talking about some these are the main characteristics of a design thinking uh, uh, you know what you see on the on the screen mm -hmm. uh, the first one uh, and the most important uh, is uh, human centered design as the foundation okay so um design thinking is all about uh, being human centric now i will give an example here mm -hmm. i will um, um, uh, uh, for example you know i came up across uh, uh, um, a situation where uh, a group of people uh, 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 were designing um, a software which will be used by blind people okay okay so the software which uh, blind people will be using to work in a uh, bpo okay mm -hmm. uh, so i think it is quite well defined what this is the scope of the of the project of the work so you go ahead and you uh, you uh, so one way of doing this of course is that uh, as i was saying earlier is that you go directly jump into solutions but the other way which actually the team did was they they locked themselves in a room and the room was completely dark so uh, the room of uh, had benches had tables had computers uh, had food uh, and uh, the team was instructed that go and uh, you know see how you can do stuff uh, how you can manage your way inside the room how you can find uh, food how you can find the table where you need to take the food and eat by doing this uh, the, the the team kind of started getting a feel of uh, what it must be uh, to not to be able to see and what are the things they should think about while uh, designing uh, this software okay so this is the human centricity part of uh, design thinking uh, the second important aspect is finding the right problem first so i think this is something which i have been talking about the fact that so before you jump to that uh, i think uh, uh, i think this is a very important point uh, you just mentioned because uh, uh, ability to think what a, a user is i mean an user may be going through uh, is to first of all understand is, is the right step towards understanding the need, isn't it? So right. because if you don't understand what is the exact need, whatever you will be uh, creating will be just guess. Right. Uh, and uh, as uh, Steve Blank has mentioned, like whatever uh, is inside the building is just a guess. You have to go outside the building, and that is exactly about uh, talking to different people, uh, having the empathy, understanding their need. 
uh, and that's where I think that this is a little different uh, than other professions. Right. So I think it's, and it comes from the fact that uh, we assume that people who are designers, people who are even uh, uh, you know specialists in 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 designing some products, uh, uh, they know the best. Mm -hmm. We kind of start forgetting that um, uh, the end users actually they know the best what what is good for them, what they what the actual need is, uh, the uh, and and therefore reaching out to them is a very very important first step, and that is the the first step of uh, design thinking. Okay. Um, uh, the second uh, aspect is finding the right problem first. Uh, why we are saying this is uh, very simple. Uh, I I talked about my previous example where we were directly jumping to the solution, and we do this most of the time. That we we think that we know the solution, and we directly don't jump to the solution. Uh, what we are saying is that no a solution can come later understanding the problem and defining the problem is the uh, is a very very important uh, step the other important characteristic of um, of uh, design thinking is uh, divergent and convergent thinking now what i mean by divergent and convergent is that you first kind of diverge you kind of think of all the various options which are possible to satisfy the the needs um, uh, you brainstorm them uh, nothing is a bad idea every idea is welcome so you diverge you create choices what are the various various options which which we can do uh, to solve the problem and only once you have analyzed them you kind of start converging and make choices so you create cho choices by diverging you converge by making choices very different from uh, the other way of uh, of designing where you kind of make choices first design develop and then uh, 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 you kind of throw it open to users for feedback i think uh, one of the important point here is that uh, i mean the, those divergent options are of all about to satisfy the need of the users and sometimes it may happen that the, that particular solution uh, does not exist right now uh, but uh, that's fine. I mean, you may be thinking about com creating a completely no sol new solution. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, the, the other, uh, so that is, that, is, that, that is very important point where you are uh, opening your mind across the board and then coming out what, what can be the various choices. Right. And then basically maybe coming out something which is viable in, uh, and converging those options. Right. So, uh, right. So, and the next important characteristic is non nonlinear uh, iterative process. Uh, nonlinear. Why? Because uh, again, uh, the the other way of designing is the linear way of designing. That is, you you design, you develop, you test, and then you reach out to the to the users. Uh, here, it is kind of an iterative process where the stakeholders are involved all the time. Uh, the end users are involved all the time. And, you are you are every time there is a feedback this you potentially can actually go back refine your, your design or maybe come up with something new and then go back so it's a kind of a iterative process the uh, Hello. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, we got muted. Uh, another important aspect is um, like you can hear us, right? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so I talked about iterative process that design thinking is all about iterative, uh, you know, uh, you design something, you take feedback, uh, you go back, you redesign it, take a, a feedback, make prototypes, take feedback. So you're continuously uh, it's, it's it's kind of an integrative process. The uh, the uh, the last uh, but definitely not the least is you satisfy needs in a technologically feasible and economically viable way. So though in in when we talked about diverge and create choices, yes, you can think out of the box, you can think wild, but that really doesn't mean that um, you do not uh, you do not check on the feasibility and the viability part. So. Yes, you make choice, you create choices, 
But when you are making choices, you also take these two important aspects into account. Okay, I think, uh, uh, I mean, I understand your point uh, from... Uh, just one minute, uh, Shikan, before we go forward, I just want to talk about one slide which uh, I kind of missed out. And that is um, this one, where I, I, so I'm just reading it out, that designs have the greatest impact when it takes out it, when it is taken out of the hands of the designers and put into every uh, hand of everyone. So it is design thinking is not about designers creating the design. It is about everybody coming together and uh, creating the design. Uh, yes. Um, okay. Shaykhan. So uh, I was I was just wondering, like I understand your point that uh, I mean. Uh, how the design thinking is different and you just mentioned certain things like uh, human centricity which is a very very important point uh, because most of the times we really forget uh, the end user uh, and basically uh, broadening your uh, spectrum or thinking and coming out with this with the widest range of solutions and then converging them out uh, and that, that's that's a that's an important point i think it this, this may, well, makes a lot of sense but uh, going forward, I mean, can you just explain like what exactly is the design thinking? Okay, okay, fair enough. So let's 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 talk about what really is design thinking. I talked about the fact that it's an iterative process. So so there is yes, there is a process. Uh, before going to the process, I would like to make one point. A uh, very important point is uh, that uh, where is design thinking applicable? Now um, uh, we have to bear in mind that not not every every problem which is being solved needs design thinking so there's a there's a very quick checkpoint so whenever you're starting a new endeavor a project or solving a problem or coming up you know addressing an opportunity uh, always check whether you know if is the problem the opportunity human centric so if there is human centric we need design thinking if it is not human centric maybe it is not really the best approach. Uh, is the problem complex to solve? So complex problems, is there uncertainty, lack of clarity, uh, is there lack of data? So all these, uh, you know, uh, um, such problems basically will need design thinking. Uh, giving an example, uh, for example, there is uh, there's a road where frequently there are traffic jams, you know huge pileups, but we don't have a lot of clarity on what is really causing the traffic jam. Uh, it's, 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 there's no clarity. Uh, what time, you know, we are not even clear on that. What time the traffic jam is there? What problems people are facing? Are they facing problems? What is the depth of the problem? What is the impact of the problem? And uh, we really don't have reliable data to solve the problem. So, uh, so this is clearly, uh, kind of a problem where we will uh, use design thinking as a way to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, going forward, uh, I talked about the design thinking process or the design thinking steps. Commonly, uh, we talk about uh, five steps in design thinking. The first is empathize. That is, um, uh, uh, so I'll talk about each step in a little more detail. Okay. Uh, but just going through the process, empathize, that is reaching out to people, talking them, understanding the problem, uh, interviewing them, uh, uh, you know, studying their environment, and then defining the problem. And just from the, from what we, the data we have gathered by talking to people, uh, uh, interacting with them, uh, we kind of now start getting the idea of what really is the problem, what are the, those needs, uh, uh, which really need to be addressed. So we define the problem. Once the problem is defined, we ideate. And ideate is where we actually think uh, wild, think wide, uh, think out of the box, various options. Uh, uh, and so this is where we do ideation. Once ideation is done, we prototype to get feedback, very quick and very inexpensive feedback through prototyping. Once we get feedback, we we actually launch the product or launch whatever it could be a service a product a software a service so and then we start we kind of test it 
uh, by the way, it looks very linear here because you know it looks like one step after the other. In reality, design thinking is not a linear process. It's it's is non-linear. It's iterative. From every step, you can actually go back to the previous step. Define, for example, from ideate, you can go back to define. From prototype, you can go back to ideate. So all these things will be happening in an iterative way. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, so this is the design thinking process. Uh, again, uh, it's not that this is the only way uh, design thinking can be defined. There are various, but this is the more common definition of the steps in design thinking. Uh, let me go through each step in a little more detail. For example, uh, so the first is empathize. Uh, what is empathize? Uh, again, interacting, engaging, empathizing with people uh, to understand their experiences. Uh, understanding culture and context before starting to get ideas. Very important uh, aspect of uh, empathizing is that you, you're not only interacting with the people, you are actually, under, it is also very cultural and context specific. So understanding those aspects are extremely important. For example, uh, uh, a water supply system in, uh, in New York, uh, city will be very different from a water supply system in a maybe a in a ru ru rural area in India, and uh, uh, un so there will be cultural aspects here. There will be um, the context is very different. So understanding these things are very important. Uh, what are the various things in empathize uh, observations from the field? So go out uh, as you just talked about. Go out of the building. You know, uh, meet people, observe, see. Uh, what really is happening around um, talk to people interviews yeah actually what what is i mean what i have seen is that uh, i mean uh, i mean from the agile uh, standpoint um, though may, we basically come uh, with a lot of requirements uh, in terms of the user stories and uh, we assume that this may be the requirement of the user basically and then uh, uh, we come out uh, with a solution go out and basically give Go, uh, go into the market or in, uh, or uh, deliver that particular feature uh, but until unless uh, you have really interacted or got the feedback from the end user uh, whatever you are thinking is a guess isn't it okay. right so so you have to really go outside of your uh, room and uh, interact with the people or get some ideas or getting the feedback in, in the right session Okay. Right. Uh, interviews, uh, uh, there are two very important aspects of empathizing phase. One is uh, you, we need to understand the needs. So very clearly, that this is what we will try to bring out in, um, in our uh, interviews and also the feelings people are going through. So feelings, needs are some important aspects which you will, you will cover in your interviews. You will do your research and groundwork, you know. And of course, you will also do a value uh, mapping, uh, 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 a value chain analysis, a journey mapping. That what all steps, what all the things the maybe the end user is going through. Can you just give some example of the journey? What you just mentioned? Yeah. So let's let's talk about. Uh, so we started by uh, the the uh, you know the working professional who is in need of uh, of lunch and dinner, healthy. So. So, so there is a problem there. There is an opportunity there. So, in empathize phase, maybe I we will go out. We will uh, uh, mm -hmm. we will uh, reach out to people, um, and we are reaching out to personas. For example, there is one person who is from uh, and uh, who is from the north of India, who is maybe forty plus in age group, living away from family. Um, Eating right and eating healthy is very, very important uh, for this, this persona. Um, 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 the, per the person also wants choices. He uh, doesn't want to kind of have the same food every, every two, three days. Uh, so when we talk to the person, he talks about the fact that, you know, I need various choices healthy choices, tasty choices, and I should be able to kind of um, kind of decide what I want for a particular lunch and dinner. Mm -hmm. The other aspect is that this person also has flexi timing. So at times, 
at dinner time is at office other time is at maybe will be at where he's staying so so the flexibility has to be there where he's getting the food so when you are talking to this person you kind of start understanding the feelings you know so okay. uh, you talk about what makes you excited when you maybe see your dinner or what 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 you don't like about uh, the dinner which is being served to you or when you are eating out and you know so these are the things which you will gather yeah, actually for example i mean uh, i have also uh, taken the different services in india and uh, one of the problem people generally see is that uh, i mean uh, whether you uh, i mean you have uh, uh, some hygienic food and uh, basically with a uh, lot less spices and uh, oils uh, plus at the same time um, uh, i mean you don't want to continue the same thing uh, every day so uh, if you need choices uh, so that's what i think the point is mentioned correct okay um uh, so this is what empathize phase is all about once of course you have we have talked to people you have discovered their needs and their uh, their feelings um, you now go and uh, um, go and define the problem okay okay uh, a very human centered problem statement and this is what they really want so yes you have a lot of needs uh, um, which you you gathered when you talk to different personas different people but then you kind of start understanding that what is what is really the need you know what is the most important need and based on that you will create a problem statement um and you will also put in some insights to it that you know for example here as uh, shikant you just mentioned about the fact that um the the healthy food hygienic food uh, so all these are insights which are very important while designing the solution whatever the solution is. um maybe will finally at this moment very important you are not yet thinking about the solution the solution is still not in the picture it is still you are trying to define what really are the top needs and what is really the problem we are going to solve so does it does, does it also mean that uh, because if uh, if you are collecting the sample data uh, with lot of people then it may happen then there are so many varied choices uh yeah, different people have different needs and things like that so uh, do you basic uh, when you come out of solution do you consider all of them or do you have some kind of uh, uh options of identifying that this is how we need to uh, define the need for example uh, so do you come with that or how do you typically it? again as i was saying and, and correct me if i'm uh, uh, if i'm wrong or i'm not answering your question uh, but what i get is you are asking how really you have so many things which have come out of yeah. empathy phase so typically again it is not that one person is sitting and defining uh, the problem so there are group of people come together brainstorm voting brainstorming and then coming up with what are the really the top needs which we really want to solve uh with uh, whatever solution we come up so okay so again it's a brainstorming exercise it's people coming together and and kind of defining and also like uh, i mean how, what is the kind of percentage of the people with that particular specific need and do we want to cater with that specific need right now things right. like that yeah yes yes so uh, that can be the choice point okay. um okay so the next of course after we have defined uh, the the problem we go to the ideate phase this is where uh, maybe we do an ideation workshop this is the fun part where people come together brainstorming so you brainstorm ideas you based on the ideas you kind of develop some concepts uh, very very important is that you welcome ideas you don't somebody maybe comes up with an idea which at this moment feels like it's infeasible and not possible but even then you are not throwing it out okay somebody might come and say that let's use drones to you know carry the food to from one location to another you are still not throwing it out um you are encouraging such ideas you are people so there are various ideas which are coming in um no idea is bad uh, and uh, think system think uh, holistic is very important that you are not for example typically what happens is that when you jump into solutions and want when you jump into designs you start uh, breaking the design into various parts and everybody is designing their small part 
You yeah, are... I think I understand your point that uh, as a programmer or developer, I may directly get into the solution mode. Uh, I may be just thinking about okay, what, how to solve this problem using a software. Right. But I think uh, I think the solution uh, may contain various aspects, and you need to think holistically, holistically. how uh, that needs to be solved. Exactly. Right. Yeah. right. And. Um, uh, so as we talked about, uh, think out outside the box. So these are this is how an ideation workshop will uh, uh, will be uh, conducted. Brainstorming. There are various formats which are very commonly used. You can use them. Um, um, so, um, uh, for example, you can start with maybe silent brainstorming. Everybody talking, uh, thinking about ideas on their own. Then they are coming and forming a team and then uh, putting the ideas together, voting. So all these things you will do. So in a very collaborative way, you will come up and develop various concepts. Okay, makes sense. Uh, the next uh, is uh, uh, after you have done the idea ideation, that is, uh, there are various options. This is where you will also, what you will do is that you will now start, start converging also is that uh, you are checking on the, the feasibility part, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, uh, and see whether you know the various ideas uh, make sense, maybe some, and so you start actually converging and you then kind of eliminate some of the ideas and uh, the and what the remaining the top ideas you start creating prototypes now prototype need not be a very a very sophisticated prototype so i'm it, just uh, sorry to interrupt but uh, do you mean to say that that we are just going to create one prototype or no no you still you are keeping options open okay. uh, and, and now for example i talked about a drone now you might realize that yes it's a great idea but because of maybe the uh, the conditions in the particular city or maybe some approvals which are needed which uh, which uh, uh, so right now maybe it is not not you know those approvals are not feasible not granted so so due to various reasons you might eliminate some of the options but you will still keep few options and you will create prototypes again prototype is not something very very sophisticated very complex Just keep it simple um, um, uh, keep it inexpensive. Mm -hmm. By the way, a whiteboard, uh, a design created on whiteboard, mm -hmm. and a discussions on a whiteboard could also be a good prototype. Okay. Uh, um, of course, prototype you need to get feedback. So, what is a very important aspect of prototype is whom you are uh, enrolling as 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 people who will who will evaluate and. Uh, uh, so the stakeholders, most likely they will be end users. Uh, so you will call a few people who are the likely potential users, uh, get their feedback on the prototype. Uh, the prototype is a visual manifestation of the concept. Um, um, uh, your prototype tells a story. Okay. So um, a very important aspect, uh, the prototyping is not about selling. It is not about become, becoming attached to your designing and start defending it, saying that no, 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 this is actually a good idea and maybe you're not getting it wrong. Mm -hmm. Get feedback, encourage honest feedback. The whole idea is get creating feedback. It is not really a selling zone. Okay. Um, engage with the stakeholder. It is not about how many people you have gathered and what is really your sample size. It is about engaging with each of these stakeholders and getting feedback. Um, Offer a small menu of choices and um, the end of the prototype cycle is either, so you are investigating the prototype, you either accept it or improve it or the idea is actually gets rejected. Okay. And so this is, you will be eliminating uh, some of the choices here and finally you kind of decide on what really think is the right solution or likely right solution. Uh, the last is the testing phase. Very quickly, testing um, will be uh, two aspects uh, uh, I'll be talking about. One is, of course, that when you are testing, you can do learning launches. There are launches which are uh, uh, not uh, done for from selling point of view, but simply to get uh, feedback. 
So you do a quick launch. Uh, the whole idea is to um, uh, quickly and inexpensively do some experiments and get feedback. Uh, again, the learning launch is also, it is a launch, but it is not selling. It is still uh, getting feedback is the most important thing. Make it feel real. The, the people who are getting feedback, uh, uh, they should feel real. They should feel that, yes, this is the real thing. And they should uh, give honest feedback to you. Okay. okay. And very important, write down all the assumptions which you want to be tested uh, in the learning launches and focus on these assumptions. Okay. The other is, of course, now uh, you have done your learning launches and now, now you are ready to launch. Launch the product. Now it is reaching out to the end users. But only thing is that um, the whole idea was that we are creating, we are solving the problem of the end users. So getting the end users is very important. So how to get people to enroll to this, uh, people trying it out, people giving feedback, uh, they becoming regular users and not only becoming regular users, they start enlisting others. Very important aspect of the whole design pro uh, thinking process is that it is, as I was saying, is iterative from every step. Even when you have launched the product, um, it is, you are always open to feedback. You are always open to improving um, uh, what, whatever you have created to the solution you are providing to solve the problem. Okay. So these are the various uh, uh, the steps, and uh, we are coming to the to the end of the the webinar. Shikhan, you want to add something? I think uh, uh, I mean first of all, I will ask a question, and then I'll be explaining certain things uh, from the agile perspective as well. Uh, so one thing I wanted to ask is like, do you mean to say that um, I mean this is one linear process in which you do? Uh, all these steps and then uh, that's it I mean that's the end of it or is it a kind of iterative process or you keep on doing things and things it, so iterative process where um, it, so though it looks linear again uh, every step you can go back and even after you have launched it that is not the end of the story you can always you're const you're always looking for feedback you are always um, ensuring that um, uh, Mm -hmm. ensuring that um, uh, you are taking the feedback seriously, either improving the product or maybe you have identified a new problem which needs to be solved. So it again goes, goes through the, the, the design thinking process. So it keeps on going. So it's not really one defined uh, project like thing. It is, it's, it's a continuous improvement process. So actually, uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. Only uh, so I would just like to add two points over here. Uh, I mean, one is one from the perspective of uh, applying design thinking in the software projects. So uh, apart from what you just mentioned, is identifying uh, the needs uh, and uh, basically coming out with a solution which satisfies the needs of the, of the end users being empathetic about it so basically all about uh, what exactly needs to be done or cre created so that is an important part but basically it, it is needs to be integrated uh, with the implementation also which is very fast i mean the you, are, you should be able to get the, and the feedback on the market very, very fast and uh, that is that can be only possible when uh, you have uh, continuous deployment or continuous delivery cycle uh, as part of your development uh, cycle because in case uh, it is happening that uh, you have the idea and you know that you want to basically get the feedback from the market or the end users pretty fast but what happened is that uh, the delivery cycle is of three months for example the quarterly lunch so that it doesn't I mean you, you will not be able to get the right feedback at the right time so I think that is a very important point that uh, a software delivery cycle uh, also uh, in the IT context, uh, uh, I mean, should have a, a, a continuous delivery approach embedded into it. Right. Uh, so that is one thing I wanted to talk about. Second thing basically I wanted to talk about is about, uh, uh, I mean, differences between the uh, lean startup and design thinking. So people, uh, may think that okay i mean it looks kind of similar uh, it, i mean 
lean, uh, lean start, uh, startup is also all about defining, identifying what exactly needs to be done. So what exactly was it? What is exactly the difference? And I think that is a very valid question. So what happen, What happens is that uh, both approaches take an idea of uh, to product in the fastest way possible. But the key difference is where the product appears in the innovation cycle. Right. Fine. So in design thinking, the approach is to first establish the need uh, for a product or the service underlying uh, understanding the customer underlying problem okay. rather than presenting them with a solution built from a developer's perspective. Uh, and design thinking emphasizes user desirability uh, and identifies potential brand spots within the founder's understanding or assumptions uh, the founder is making. The discovery phase is uh, very important or the critical in design thinking. So most of the work is focused uh, uh, on developing a human-centered understanding of the problem before going into the solution board. With Lean start, Startup, the philosophy is to build fast, test, and pivot. Right. The Lean Startup uh, approach is to begin with a minimum viable product and make small, fast incremental changes to evolve the design after receiving feedback from the user. So if you think about Lean Startup, then it is all about the customer development plus agile. Uh, Lean Startup is formed from the combination of the customer development, which offers a way to find, test, and grow customers, and uh, agile product developments, which, so that, that's what basically we were talking about. So, uh, so the point I, I think which uh, we will be coming as a conclusion is that uh, I feel that, you know, I personally feel that there can be a combination of the design thinking and the lean startup approach. Right. So before you jump to uh, doing a minimum viable product or uh, pivoting and things like that, you may be coming out with a design thinking uh, workshop and uh, in a way to identify the uh, human centered needs of, of the end users. Right. Uh, and then basically venturing out with the minimum viable product and basically is iterate it uh, with, with the right solution. Okay, so I think uh, we covered a bit here uh, on the design thinking. So I think we are open to the questions. So uh, I just uh, see if there is a, any question in the chat. So uh, one question is how do you marry uh, design thinking? Uh, just a moment. With agile methodology, so I just I just made, uh, I think we just mentioned about it that uh, uh, design thinking and agile uh, approach go hand in hand. So as uh, design thinking is all about what exactly needs to be done, and agile is all about how to do it in a more efficient way. So so until unless you identify what exactly needs to be done, whatever you will be creating may be waste. For example. So, and that's where I mentioned that we need to have a continuous review cycle uh, embedded with the design thinking so that we can basically uh, implement the idea very fast, get the feedback from the market very fast, uh, and see how things are working. Right. right. So, uh, so uh, we are open for other questions. Any other questions apart from this one? So one question from Shilpa. So is design thinking applicable only to a business specific role like PO or to the team as well? So, uh, so again, as, as maybe somewhere I mentioned that it is everybody coming together. So it's, we are not resting it, restricting it to a particular role. People coming together, we are brainstorming, uh, uh, we are collaborating, brainstorming, and coming together with, um, coming together to define what really is the problem and what maybe could be a good solution. So initially, I think uh, there can be workshops in identifying what exactly needs to be done, but as you move towards the iterative approach, uh, then we, I mean, there will be combined discussion in the team, like designer says, what about uh, uh, doing some certain changes in, in this particular field. Uh, so for example, one example in the Airbnb was that uh, they wanted to have a wish list, fine, uh, of where the people want to go. 
uh, and uh, uh, Airbnb used uh, the stars. But basically, the designer thought, what about we use hard on that and see like how it works. Right. And he gave the idea, but then the continuous delivery team uh, really supported this idea and uh, implemented it uh, next day. And then they see the jump in the uh, uh, in the views uh, or the the, the uses of, the, uh, of that particular feature. So it's not. I think. Uh, uh, I mean. I mean. The, the, the team will be definitely will be involved initially also like when you were talking about a solution solution is not just from the business point of view but also from the technical, technical point of view whether it's a technical from the technical viability point of view it is possible or not or uh, what all things can be done from a technical standpoint so that's where also the team will be involved right? so uh, so it's a kind of combination of all the people it's not just the role of the designer uh, to define the solution it's the role of everybody's uh, who put their wild thoughts and come out with a solution which can be, which can satisfy the needs of uh, the user. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Um, how do you generate empathy when working on a mass market product? Um, uh, so mass market product, as as, as you mentioned, like the uh, the different uh, system or something uh, is, is a huge market uh, which so we, i think it's, and so uh, identifying who are you really the uh, the people you would like to um, uh, like to focus on so the, the 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 different personas who are the the possible users of the solution you will be providing or the, the problem you are trying to solve so you identify these people and uh, and very important that you don't restrict it to you know it's not about the numbers it is about the diversity so diversity is very important so you will try to take people from different background uh, you know so depending on the problem you are you are trying to solve you will identify who are the different people who would you like to enlist as people whom you want to go and talk to, um, interview, observe. Uh, so this is how you will do it. Uh, so I think the, to, to the question, I think this is all about sampling uh, uh, certain users for that particular persona and uh, see uh, what, they, what they feel about uh, those particular needs. Uh, I mean, definitely uh, having lots of users is uh, is an added advantage because uh, I mean you will get different perspective. But as Sutap mentioned, it's more about getting different uh, different perspectives, uh, uh, and certain, certain group of people may have just one is, is, is a I mean a defined perspective, and so based on that, you come up with a there are there are diverse needs right or and uh, important aspect of course is that for a uh, for a product which has which is far reaching uh, the mass will be big there is no uh, no denying that uh, so you will be and one one important aspect of of empathy phase is also you need you come up with a questionnaire um, uh, which you will take to people and people will answer the questions and that will kind of uh, start giving you uh, insights into the, the feelings they are having, uh, the, the needs. Uh, so yes, it's a coming up with a questionnaire and then reaching out to a lot of people. So another question is in which specific uh, uh, agile methodology uh, we are using design thinking specifically than others or it is used in all frameworks. So it's, I think it's not about the frameworks. See, uh, before, I mean, think about it like, uh, again, I want to emphasize this, uh, uh, I mean, very specifically. Uh, agile methodologies are all about doing things in a more collaborative way and doing it efficiently, fine? So the point is that there, there is some stuff to be done and you're using as agile approaches to do that. Before, before you even come to do that, you need to define what exactly needs to be done. Right. Fine. And uh, and that is not a very simple ans uh, answer because uh, you, you may be working in a 
very complex environment where the where you really don't understand the right needs of the, uh, of the end users. So that's where basically in I to identify what exactly needs to be built uh, or which satisfy the needs of the end users, you will be do, using different approaches like uh, design thinking. Uh, and that's where it comes. So irrespective of the framework, I mean, as I said, like the framework or agile approaches really, really will come later when you understand what needs to be done. So it doesn't really matter which framework or approach, agile approach you're using, it can be used anywhere. During the ideation phase of design thinking, is it possible to come up with a key list of user stories? Um, so uh, I think uh, um, when we are talking about the ideation phase, uh, we are uh, thinking wide. We are thinking so many choices, uh, and uh, we uh, and b before you go to the, I mean, to think about what exactly needs to be built, you need to really brainstorm on all those ideas, right? Uh, and uh, converge to uh, to something which on which you can start building the prototypes fine and again when we say the prototypes it may not be something which is which goes into production for example so, uh, the a prototype may be something which is uh, which is very simple thing to do to be built and uh, you ask the end user to see like how do you how do, i mean does, does, does this solution satisfies your needs or so it may be a very uh, capital uh, inefficient, uh, sorry, capital uh, efficient way you can you can you can be building the the prototypes. And then when you when you understand, may, okay, that makes sense. Then you may start thinking of, okay about like how to build it in the real production. So, so the, the ideation workshops, by the way, are really um, these are. Uh, I would like to say that these are fun workshops where, of course, you're doing serious stuff, but you are coming in, you are, you are coming up, up with wild ideas. Maybe you're using a lot of visual charts, pictures, you know, to come up with the idea, to kind of draw it out. So this is what is happening in the ideation phase. Uh, and another thing I want to add here is that, I mean, I think we need to come out with, uh, with the thought process of the software world. Uh, that is very important because as soon as we think about a solution, we think about how right. to build the use. Right. I think we need to come out with that. Uh, maybe the solution uh, may be lying. Uh, uh, I mean, some some part of the solution may be lying uh, working in, in the field uh, because software or electronic way of doing things may be just one part of it. Exactly. So, for example, like uh, let's take, take an example. Uh, so, I want to. Uh, I have a, a food app. And food app is really excellent, fine, makes sense. But what about uh, its delivery? Uh, the delivery is pathetic. So who can? I mean, at the end of the it, like the solution doesn't work, right. irrespective of uh, what is what is the kind of uh, software you're building. Software may be one part of it, and sometimes it may not be part of the solution at all. So I think uh, we need to think it from the holistic point of view. What in the ideation phase? what exactly can satisfy the need uh, of the user and uh, we will not be trying to uh, put our hats on the, from the software, software point of view. Software may be one part of it, but uh, uh, may, I may not be, for example. Okay, um, yeah, any other question? So, uh, Okay, um, so okay, so I think uh, so so that's it. So this was a, a brief snapshot of what design thinking is all about. Uh, thanks all of you for joining. Um, we will also make the video of this webinar available, uh, and we would also like you to uh, to join us in our design uh, thinking workshop which we will be announcing very soon thank you so thanks everyone thank you very much thank you